In our second video for chapter nine, we're going to build the ideal gas law. And knowing what the ideal gas law means from this video and then how to use it from the next are arguably the two most important parts of chapter nine. What the ideal gas law does is relate the four quantities that were discussed in the first video. Okay? Pressure, volume, amount, we use moles, and temperature. Okay? The ideal gas law relates all of those. And we're going to build it from the relationships that we can see in the lab. Okay? Because that's how this thing first came to be. Right? Scientists, and we'll talk about four of them, determine the mathematical relationships between two of these variables individually, right? Like pressure and volume, the relationship between those, for example, okay? and the different combinations there. We use those to build, okay, a relationship that we have for an ideal gas. Okay? Now, no gas is ideal at every pressure and temperature, right? An ideal gas is a hypothetical construct that our real gases, right, things like air or different gaseous molecules can approximate depending on the conditions they're at, specifically their pressure and temperature. Okay, so we'll look at those relationships individually, then put them into one equation that's known as the ideal gas law. Okay, so the four quantities I mentioned before that we use to define a gas, pressure, the unit we use was introduced in the first video, atmospheres. Volume, the unit we'll use here is liters. Quantity or amount, we use moles. And temperature, in this chapter, we have to be using Kelvin. Right. So there are a lot of different types of gases that we can describe using those quantities, right? There's air, there's elemental gases, like our noble gases, or diatomic hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen. There are also molecular compounds that are gases. But the reason the ideal gas law is so significant is because regardless of the identity of our gas, be it one thing or a mixture, right, everything can depend on those four properties that we just named, pressure, volume, molar amount, and temperature. So let's build that as promised and see how it was discovered. The first law we're gonna look at is called Aminton's law. And Aminton's law gives us the relationship between temperature and pressure. Provided that volume is fixed, okay, we are at a constant volume, we can see the relationship between pressure and temperature. Okay. Again, we use temperature on the Kelvin scale, and when we do that, we see that pressure and temperature are directly proportional to one another. So we can say P equals KT, where P is pressure, K is a constant, and T is temperature. So what that looks like, if we look at some round bottom flasks here, made out of glass, right? So they have a fixed volume, not like a balloon, which could change its volume. Okay, fixed volume, and we see that as we increase the temperature by ramping up the hot plate, the pressure increases accordingly. They have a nice direct relationship. Okay? And right, we use Kelvin temperature because we can't have a negative temperature that way. Can't get lower than zero Kelvin, absolute zero. Okay? And we see that there's a nice linear relationship between pressure and temperature. Okay, don't let the KPA throw you off here. You could use atmospheres as well. Okay, the only thing is you always have to be using temperature in Kelvin. Can't have a negative temperature, can't have a negative pressure. So we can also manipulate the equations, okay? Starting with Aminton's law, okay? I can relate a starting and a final state for a gas. So, because if the volume changes, or sorry, the volume is constant with Aminton's law, we can relate our initial pressure and temperature to our final pressure and temperature, right? And show in this now modified version of Aminton's law, P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. So if I know a starting pressure and temperature and the final temperature, I can also solve for the final pressure or any other combination thereof. So that's the first law, Aminton's law, relates pressure and temperature. Next we go to Charles' law, okay? And what Charles' law looked at right, is how the relationship that exists between temperature and volume, okay? So we're keeping pressure constant and we're keeping the amount constant, but now looking at the relationship between volume and temperature. 
Okay. And maybe you've seen this, right? If you put something that's inflated in the fridge or the freezer, it shrinks, okay? Because the gas inside gets cold. The balloon shrinks, okay? the volume gets smaller. Opposite of that, something gets too hot, the volume increases. So let's see what's going on there, thinking about gases. We again see a linear relationship, a direct relationship between volume in liters and temperature in Kelvin. So I can relate Charles' law, V equals KT. Just like Aminton was P equals KT, now Charles' law is V equals KT. Shows me that volume is directly proportional to temperature, provided the pressure and the amount are remaining constant. The modified version, like we just talked about, okay, to solve for an initial or a final state, V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. All right, a different way of showing our next idea, okay? Now we're gonna look at volume and pressure, okay? Here, we've got a syringe, right? And as we decrease the volume, right, push that syringe in, the pressure increases. So that tells me I've got a relationship between volume and pressure as well, as long as I'm keeping the temperature and the amount the same, okay? So constant temperature, constant amount, we have a relationship between volume and pressure. Okay. Right, you can think about it, you force anything closer together, the pressure increases. Opposite of that holds as well, right? You decrease the volume, or sorry, you increase the volume by expanding it, you decrease the pressure. So now I've got an inverse relationship. Okay? Now, instead of a straight equation, right? now I've got P equals K over V. K is again, a different constant. And this is called Boyle's Law. Volume of a gas at a constant temperature is inversely proportional to the pressure where it's measured. Okay, so first two, Charles and Hamilton, those were direct relationships, but now this one is inverse. Okay, so as pressure goes up, volume goes down, vice versa. P equals K over V. So our modified version to find an initial or a final state looks a little bit different. Now it's just straight P1 V1 equals P2 V2, where P is pressure, V is volume. Okay. And this is the relationships there. Okay. Pressure and volume shown graphically. Okay. Remember, volume in liters, pressure in atmospheres in chapter nine. Our last relationship is that between volume and amount. Okay. And this one probably makes the most sense of all of these. If we have the same temperature and the pressure, okay, if I increase the amount, I increase the volume. And that one's called Avogadro's Law, named after the same Avogadro where we get Avogadro's number from. Okay? So we write that as V equals KN, where V is volume and N is moles. And our modified version is V1 over N1 equals V2 over N2. So now if I take all four of those laws together, right, Aminton, Charles, Boyle, Avogadro, I can combine them into one law where all four relate together. PV equals NRT. It's the same P we've been using, pressure in atmospheres. V is volume in liters. N is moles. T is temperature in Kelvin. And R is a constant. What that constant comes from is combining all of those other Ks that were constants, and now we put it into one new constant called R, and that's known as the ideal gas constant. So we will learn what that ideal constant, ideal gas constant is in our next video and how to use the ideal gas law. Okay, the takeaway here from the second video is those individual relationships and knowing that they can all be put together into the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. The equation we'll use more than any other in chapter five. Chapter five, whoa, where did that come from? In chapter nine.